Hi guys, welcome to lesson uh, four five, writing a function rule. Our objective for today's lesson is that I can write equations that represent functions. Our essential understanding is that many real world functional relationships can be represented by equations. You can use an equation to find out the solution of a given real world problem. So let's dive in and start off with problem number one, writing a function rule. So letter A, a landfill has 50,000 tons of waste in it. Each month it accumulates an average of 420 more tons of waste. What is a function rule that represents the total amount of waste after M months? All right, so important pieces of information. We already have 50,000 tons of waste in this landfill. And we are adding 420 more tons of waste each month. And we want to write a function rule relating to M months. So we know that M is months. I'm going to define that Y is equal to total waste. So now we write our equation. Y is equal to, we're going to multiply something times M, right? Because we have the total number of months that we want to know about. Well, we're told we have 420 tons of waste added per month. So it's going to be 420 times M. We already have 50,000 tons of waste in this landfill, so we have to add that 50,000 to our total. So our total amount of waste in the landfill is what we started with, 50,000 tons, plus 420 tons per month times the number of months that have passed. Okay. Letter B, Carolyn has 420 CDs in her collection. Each month, she adds 12 more CDs to the collection. What equation is a function, that represent, function rule that represents this situation? So I'm going to say X is number of months, and Y is the CDs in her collection. Now you should get in the habit of defining what your variables are, especially if you're using something generic like X and Y. Um, if we were using like C for CDs and M for months, uh, then we might not have to define them quite as clearly, but especially if you're going with the generic X, Y, you should always tell us what we are talking about, what each variable is, okay? So Y is equal to, well, we're starting with 420 CDs in the collection, and we are adding 12 more per month. So 12 CDs per month times the number of months is going to give you CDs, plus the number of CDs she has already is going to give us the total in her collection. Pearl Jam 10, one of the best albums ever. Walkman allegedly was anti-skip, never really bought it. All right, sorry, Discman, not Walkman. The Rockford Discovery Center, or you guys try the next two. The Rockford Discovery Center charges $7 for parking. They also charge a fee of $12 per person for admission. Write a function rule that represents this situation. So we're looking for the total cost. So y is, or x is number of people. Y is cost. So the cost is equal to $12 per person times the number of people plus $7 per, for parking because you're only paying that fee once to park. Okay. So words that you're looking for for your rate of change or anything where it says like per person, per month, per hour, those are generally going to be telling you that you're dealing with a rate of change. All right. Green's Gym charges a one-time registration fee of $50. They also charge $30 per session to work with a personal trainer. Write a function rule that represents this situation. So uh, X is number of sessions. Y 
y is cost. So our cost is equal to $30 per session times the number of sessions, x, plus $50 for the registration fee. All right. Moving on to problem number two, writing and evaluating function rules. So now we're going to take the next step. We're going to write the, the function rule, and then we are going to use it to find the value of something. So a kennel charge is $15 per day to board dogs. Upon arrival, each dog must have a flea bath that costs $12. Write a function rule for the total cost for n days of boarding plus a bath. How much does it cost for a 10-day stay? All right, so. You'll notice I'm underlining important pieces of information in our story. I'm looking for numbers that are relating to our cost. So our function rule, we've got cost is equal to $15 per day times n, they gave us a variable to work with, n days, plus our $12 flea bath. All right, so that's our function rule. So that is the first part of what we were asked to do for this question. But the second part, how much does a 10-day stay cost, we need to substitute 10 in for the number of days. So 15 times 10 plus 12. 15 times 10 is 150 plus 12. So the cost to board the dog for 10 days is $162. Do not forget your units. Okay. So, letter B asks us, does a five-day stay cost half as much as a 10-day stay? Why or why not? Well, the answer is clearly going to be no. Because of the flea bath, which was a fixed cost that you have to incur no matter what, whether it's one day, 10 days, 20 days, 100 days, you're gonna pay that $12 fee for a flea bath on that first day that they came in. So we're not just dividing by two each time. And if you were to plug in five for the number of days, you would find that the cost of a five day uh, boarding would be $87, which is not half of 162. Half of 162 would be 181. All right, so because of that flea bath, that, that starting cost of no matter how many days they're there, uh, you're not just gonna be cutting things in half because your stay is half as long. All right, letter C. An archery club charges an annual membership fee of $65 plus $2 per visit. Write a function rule for the total cost of belonging to the club if you make V visits per year. How much would it cost if you use the club 15 times in the year? All right, so we've got $65 for the membership fee plus $2 per visit. We want to know a function for how, uh, V visits in a year, and then we want to know what the price is for 15 times in a year. So let's just start with our cost is equal to, it said $2 per visit, so 2 times V plus $65 for our membership fee. Okay, so our cost for a 15 visits, so we have two times 15 plus 65, C equals 30 plus 65, so our cost would be $95. Now as a quick little aside here, um, I wanna just look at our units real quick. We're told that it is $2 per visit. So we have dollars per visit. And we are adding, we are multiplying times the number of visits. And we are adding dollars. And we're equal to dollars, because cost is measured in dollars. So this is one way to make sure that you're putting the right things in place for your uh, rate of change and for your y-intercept, your starting costs. Uh, because if you were to multiply dollars per visit times visits, visits cancel out and we're left with dollars plus dollars 
equals dollars. So our units, so this would be this is what we call unit analysis, our units line up for this equation. If we were to have put the 65 times the number of visits, it would be $65 times visits plus dollars per visit. That would not equal dollars. So that would not make sense. So that's just a little bit of an aside there. When you're looking for rates of change, you always want to pay attention to the units and make sure that your units are doing what you want them to do. All right, uh, why don't you guys try letters A and B and then we'll go over them. So Mr. Boland is planning to go to the Cubs season opener in Miami over spring break. The cost of the flight is $350 and the hotel is $90 per night, I wish. Write a function rule for the cost of this trip. And then how much would he spend if he stayed for six nights? So we have C is cost, N is nights. So the cost is equal to $90 per night times the number of nights plus my fixed cost of my flight. So no matter how many nights I spend, it's gonna cost me $350. So now I want to substitute in my decision of six nights. So I'm gonna make it a long trip down there. So we have C equals 90 times six plus 350. 90 times six is gonna be 540 plus 350. So the cost of my trip is going to be $890. Make sure you have your units there. All right, letter B. The enrollment in Algebra 2 at DHS is currently 320 students. It is increasing at a rate of four students per term. We want to write a function for the number of students after n terms, and we want to know how many are in the class after six. So we have uh, y is equal to four students per term times the number of terms plus those currently in it. And there's my definition, y is our number of students. And I said I wanted to know if there were six terms of this growth, how many students would be in uh, Algebra 2. So we have four times six plus 320. Four times six is 24 plus 320. So y is equal to 344 students. Okay. All right. Moving on to our second section here, we have writing a nonlinear function rule. So we need to plug in what are, uh, we want to know what is the function rule for the area of a triangle whose height is four inches more than the length of its base. And the area, of, uh, we want to know when the area of the base is 16 inches. So first, let's start with our area equation. Area of a triangle is 1 half times base times height. And we are told that the height is 4 inches more than the base. So we can rewrite this as A equals 1 half times the base times four inches more than the height, or the base. Okay, so when we plug in 16 for our base, the area is equal to 1 half times 16 times four plus 16. And when we type that out, we've got one hundred and sixty cubic or square inches because it's area. Okay. So we want to graph the function rule from problem three and we want to know how do we know it's not going to be linear. Uh, so let's just start off with we have um, different values for our base and our area. Now our base and our area. 
And let's just start off with, well, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so we've got one through five as our possible amount. So if the base is one, so we have 0.5 times one times five, which would be 2.5. We have 0.5 times two times six, which is six. For three, we've got 0.5 times three times seven, which is 10.5. And we have 0.3, or 0.5 times four times eight, which is 16. And we said we had five, so we have 0.5 times five times nine, which is 22.5. So let's graph these points. We have, if obviously, if the base is zero, we have zero for our triangle for the area. Uh, so the area for that is 2.5, which would be right about there. For two, we're up to six, which is right there. For three, we're at 10.5, which is right there. Four, we're at 16, so there. And five is all the way up at 22 and a half. So this is a small scale, um, but if I hold up a straight line to it, can I connect all of these dots in one straight line? No, you can see that it's actually curving pretty dramatically once you get up to the top. So if I were to draw and connect all of these dots in, you can see that that is a pretty significant curve. It is not a straight line. All right, so write a function rule for the area of a rectangle whose length is three inches more than its width. So let's draw a quick little picture here. We have the width and the length is three inches more than the width, so it's three plus w. And we want to know the area of that rectangle. Uh, so we need to multiply. Area is length times width. And if we know our area, or our length in this case is 3 plus w times w, we want to know what is the uh, area of the rectangle with a width of 7 inches. So we are going to plug seven into our equation. Three plus seven times seven. A is equal to 10 times seven, so the area is 70 inches squared. Okay, uh, for you guys, I want you to, for letter A, we need to change this to area, because if we looked at the perimeter of a rectangle, we would not have a, uh, it would be a linear function, not a nonlinear function. All right, so we want to write the function rule for the area of a rectangle whose width is six more than four times its length. All right, so let's draw a picture. So we know its length, and we're told our width is six more than, so we're doing plus six, six more than, four times its length, four times its length. Six more than four times its length. And we know the area of a rectangle is equal to length times width. So we have the length times 4L plus six, right? Because that whole expression is the width of our rectangle. And we wanted to know what the area was with a length of 10 feet. So we go ahead and plug 10 into that equation. So you have 10 times 4 times 10 plus 6. So 4 times 10 is 40 plus 6. 10 times 46, which is going to be 460 feet squared. All right. All right, that's the end of our notes for today.
make sure that you fill out your level of understanding. Uh, write down any qu questions you may have come up with over the lesson or any confusions over what we did. And then do make sure that you write the summary uh, for what you learned in this lesson. Uh, and we will see you all in class tomorrow. Have a great night.